Hey, what's up everybody? Frank Valkyria. Welcome to the channel. First of all, thank you so much for all the new audience joining the channel of this adventure of uh, finding the truth and hopefully, hopefully also clearing up the name of a good man. Um, today we're going to go through this other video made by Incredibly Average, super awesome guy. This man already started to put together stuff in 2019, April 2019. And uh, this video in particular has 142,000 views. We're trying to get a little bit more momentum sharing those infos that he put together with my commentary as well. So I put the link below to Incredibly Average. Let's go together. Let's listen to this. Hey everyone, welcome back. So, a lot of stuff has happened since posting my last two videos, most notably, as in very recently, Amber Heard filed a motion to dismiss the $50 million defamation suit filed against her by Johnny Depp. That said, that's not what I plan to cover in this video. And I also want to add, this is exactly what happened also to the trial, when uh, her lawyers, they tried to basically stop the, you know, the suit, and uh, the, the judge uh, didn't accept. Don't get me wrong, I've seen the new filings and do plan to cover them in detail, but this video's been planned for weeks now and it's more of an addendum to my original three videos. If you haven't watched those, I hope you do before watching this, just so it makes a little more sense. Also, I poured a ton of work into them and I can all but guarantee you they contain a good amount of information you might not have seen yet. I'll link all three videos below. The first, The Lies Not Talked About, primarily goes over the original allegations about the December 2015 incident. Basically, one of her key witnesses claimed to have been in L.A. to see the immediate aftermath of the alleged incident, but in actuality was on the other side of the country. The next two videos are essentially one long video focusing on the allegations on the night of May 21, 2016, titled The Questions You Should Be Asking. I elected to split it into two parts. This is where I think some confusion might have been. Whereas most Part 1 videos do contain the bulk of big discoveries and holy cow moments while Part 2s tend to be extra stuff for additional clicks, my Part 1 is more of an informational setup for the second part, and Part 2 really brings the big discoveries but has only a fraction of the views. So not to be that guy who shamelessly plugs his content, but please if you've watched Part 1 but not Part 2 thinking Part 1 had all the good stuff in it, please go watch Part 2 all the way to the end because that's where the big payoff is. Now then, where were we? Oh yeah. With the new filings came a number of new allegations, exhibit submissions, and declarations from Amber. I'll be using a few of the newly submitted exhibits in this video only because they are directly connected to what I've already talked about. So I suppose you could look at this as a punctuation to my earlier videos, but also as a transition to the new ones that will be coming as this progresses. As such, this video should be a little bit shorter than its predecessors, so let's get started. My first point is an addition to my first ever video. In it, I use I.O. Tillett Wright's article he penned for the refinery to pinpoint the date of the December 2015 alleged incident. Also, I want to briefly point out that I was right, as it was finally confirmed by Amber in her new filings to be December 15, 2015. In the article, I.O. talks about seeing the aftermath and injuries claimed to have been suffered by Amber Heard at the hands of Johnny Depp. He would go on to say he watched Amber go on national television the next night, smiling through a bloody lip. Amber alleged on the night before appearing on The Late Late Show on December 16, 2015 that she feared for her life at the hands of Johnny Depp. She and I.O. claimed that Johnny tried to suffocate Amber, ripped multiple chunks of hair from her scalp, struck her repeatedly, and used his entire weight to smash her face with his head, nearly breaking her nose. The new filings add even more acts of violence, but we'll go over those a bit more down the road. By the way, I'm still looking for the visible evidence of these horrific injuries. From the looks of it, aside from looking a bit tired, I see no busted lip or even anything close to a laceration or open wound on it. I see no swelling on the face and certainly not on the nose, which was said to be nearly broken less than 24 hours earlier, and no clumps of hair missing, and yes, I'm aware the hair could be styled a certain way to mask that. However, no amount of makeup can hide what would have been inevitable swelling from such impact, but we can get more into that as we go over the new filings in later videos. Now I know this is something that plenty of people have pointed out already, but there is this screenshot from a high quality clip of the episode showing Amber voluntarily scrunching up her face and nose while telling a story. This act doesn't definitively prove her lack of injuries, but logic and common sense have to play a role in this. 
If you've had someone smash your nose, nearly breaking it with their head using their full body weight, it would be very difficult to make this face without a notable reaction from the pain and discomfort, if not making it impossible altogether. I well, I'll say it uh, in your place. I mean, there is no freaking way you can smile if you have pain. And especially like this, so whatever, you know, seems so effortless. And uh, with, the, with the headbutt, most likely you will have, first of all, the whole sectum will be like bruised and it will hurt like hell. And uh, the, the first thing that goes when you get a headbutt that, that strong that almost broke your nose is that you start to get a really big swelling under the eyes here and it becomes purple. Or, you know, anyway, you see that, that color of the bruise and there is obviously nothing here there is not even a sign of being swollen anywhere on the face of this woman actually she looks quite pretty and the makeup wouldn't be able to cover being swollen most likely sometimes when when the hit is strong you might even have blood in the eye you know like the day after something like that if you get punched in the face even worse so it's a, a no-no to me and also an absolute absolute evidence that what she said was untrue a lie there is this is like really the biggest proof it's one of the the, the biggest proof you can have to confirm that what she said uh, about the alleged attack wasn't true i made sure to point out that this screenshot comes from a high quality clip because it's all i could find online a couple of clips from the episode I even looked for anywhere I could purchase the episode, but it seems to be scrubbed from the internet, at least in high quality. If anyone can get their hands on it, please let me know. I that wonder being why. said, I did manage to find a slightly lower quality copy of the entire episode from opening to closing credits. Even though it is a lower quality copy, it was more than enough to debunk a big claim made by IO in his article. But first, I want to point out another face or two Amber makes with literally no reaction to what should have Dude. been a good deal of pain and discomfort. So let's take a look. Uh, you know, that like face looks amazing. People, they um, didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, it... I'm gonna go back and freeze it right here. Again, who is capable of this after having their lip busted open? Overlooking the thought that even if she forgot about the lip, this would most likely cause a noticeable reaction once the pain reminds her, oh yeah, that hurts. But also wouldn't pulling the lip in in a biting motion using that amount of pressure and suction risk reopening a wound that, let's be honest, probably wouldn't have been closed in the first place, causing it to bleed all over again. Then there's this coming out of a commercial break, another interesting face to casually make when you have a nearly broken nose and a busted lip. Again, the nose scrunched up and this time with the mouth and lips stretched wide open, apparently not causing any discomfort or fear of reopening the wound. These are just a few examples of something more than... Look, her face looks like nearly perfect like in terms of symmetry on both sides like there's really not one sign not even a memory of a scratch on the face of this person nothing nothing absolutely nothing simply smiling through a bloody lip that could indicate the level of discomfort that she was or was not in as a result of the alleged injuries now back to the article from io I.O. claims that he watched Amber on television nearly jump out of her seat when someone casually put a hand on her shoulder because she didn't know it was coming. That is a very specific statement to make. Remember, I said I have the entire episode from start to finish. At no point during the show does anyone even touch Amber's shoulder. As a matter of fact, the only time she jumps is here. Let me slow that down for you. Do you see anyone touch her shoulder? Yeah. Me neither. In fact, I very specifically see James sit down in his chair and without noticing causes the armrest of the chair to push down on Amber's hand, pinning it on the armrest of the couch. This causes her to react by quickly yanking her hand free and then carrying on with the rest of the show. So why embellish on this simple act by trying to turn it into something it wasn't? Why I wonder why. I lie about someone even touching her shoulder or that she nearly jumped out of her seat because she didn't know it was coming when none of those things happened. And that's exactly what I'm calling it, an outright lie, possibly to convince people of some sort of trauma or PTSD that simply wasn't evident, so he had to make it up, thinking and hoping no one would find out the truth and put it out there. 
Okay, so let's move on to my next addendum. This is actually the only other one I've decided to put in this video because all the other points I'd like to post would make much more sense to be shown in concert with the information and contradictions found within the latest court filings. If you watched my second video, both part one and part two, you know that in part two I go over some details about the originally submitted photos of the alleged abuse injuries and touched briefly on the submitted property damage photos. I'm actually glad I held off on presenting any of my thoughts on the property damage photos because with Amber's new filing, we seem to finally have all the photos that were taken following the May 21st, 2016 incident. As you might recall, both Amber and her friend Raquel Pennington, who lived in a neighboring condo, submitted separate declarations in late May of 2016. In those declarations, each described a very similar scene. Both state that at some point during Johnny's alleged tirade, he picked up a magnum-sized bottle of wine and began swinging it to smash everything he could while in condo 3. They go on to say that he would smash things in the hall, including a wine bottle, before going into condo 5 to continue screaming and breaking things. I want to add because it's extremely important that roughly 25 minutes after the alleged incident and after Johnny had left, two LAPD officers, Officer Tyler Haddon and Officer Melissa Sains, both of whom are trained in domestic abuse and domestic abuse response, performed two security sweeps of the properties along with two interviews of Amber, with both officers testifying under oath to seeing no signs of visible injury, nor any signs of vandalism, broken or damaged property, or spilled wine with neither knowing they were even at Johnny Depp's property at the time. That is very important. Now with the original declarations, these four photos were submitted showing the alleged property damage. A couple of quick notes, where as a few more photos were added to the mix as part of the recent filings, this particular original photo was not. However, to continue to prove my point and for complete transparency, I will be including it in my breakdown. So let's get right to the point. Amber and Raquel both claim Johnny destroyed and smashed everything he could in Condo 5 and on the first level of Condo 3. Condo 3, of course, being Johnny and Amber's primary residence, while Condo 5 served as a guest condo, Amber's closet, and at this time in... What a wimp! You know, if like a, a few of pictures frame and some wine dropped on the floor, it's all the damage that you find in that house, that's uh, really not a lot of damage. And uh, I would say like, you know, I, I make more damage when I fart, when after I have like uh, an omelet with red onions in, I'm just saying. 2016, Raquel's bead business. The latter, by the way, only recently admitted by Amber in the recent filings and since my last video. I plan to prove that even though they claim Johnny destroyed both Condo 3 and 5, there is not one, I repeat, not one single photo depicting any damage done to Condo 3. Let's start with the easiest. These two photos were clearly taken in the hallway. Simple enough, check them off the list, moving on. Next is this photo, a sofa or a chair with some tangled up beads on it. In her original declaration, Amber claims Johnny went into Condo 5 and destroyed her personal property, but in the new filing, she shifts gears and focus and states Johnny destroyed, and I quote, all of Rocky's beads. This is the only photo submitted showing the bead damage. Apparently, beads share a similar characteristic as the slinky. Once you twist them up a bit, they're essentially worthless. Nevertheless, this proves this was taken in Condo 5 and not Condo 3. Next is the photo of the broken picture frame. To oh my god, like, it's seriously? See, what, what a bunch of, like, useless evidence. And also, if there is not a timestamp that you can read, like, where the picture was taken, or if it's not fiddle with it, it means nothing, you know? Prove it was not taken in Condo 3, we need only look at a couple of things. First we'll look- I mean the metadata, sorry. Look at the wall color, it looks to be a shade of green or blue-green. There are a couple of walls in Condo 3 that one could argue are similar, starting with this one. This is upstairs in Condo 3. Nice painting. In a room they had turned into an office area. If you notice in the photo, there's a two-tone wall color scheme with a distinct sharp transition from green to white. The same pattern appears to be continued on the wall around a short corner, just barely visible in the background. Kind of like this. Here's a better photo of the room, emptied and showing no white on the walls, only on the ceiling. Also, the main thing that debunks the possibility of it being in this room is that this is upstairs and Amber and Raquel claim Johnny only destroyed things on the first floor of Condo 3 that night, so let's check that out. The only walls even remotely similar in color are in the kitchen area, but the possibility of the photo being taken there shot down the moment you see all the picture frames stop about halfway up the wall, and there's no point where the green paint does not go all the way to the ceiling. So no two-tone paint schemes here. 
Considering they only claim he destroyed things in Condo 3 and 5, this can only lead us to believe this was taken somewhere in Condo 5. I'll be covering these next few photos as a group. That's because they were taken just a few feet away from one another. In the new filings, we get a much more clear shot of this original photo along with a couple of additions. This was actually hugely beneficial in confirming my findings. All of these photos were taken in Condo 5. There are a number of reasons I know this. First, I want to point out that in my part 2 video, I said this looked like a rug turned upside down. As I looked further into it, I realized it was meant to be that way. You see, this is a form of rough carpeting for what I assume would give a better gripping surface. This particular photo was taken on a landing area at the top of some stairs. These stairs, to be exact. How do I know? Well, it seems pretty clear that the, let's just call it carpeting, is not only on the landing, but the stairs as well. I want to point out that Condo 3 does have a landing and black stairs, but doesn't have this kind of grip carpeting. Also, you can clearly see the wall color matches Condo 5. The next photo is taken just to the right of the landing, on the few steps that lead to the mezzanine level of Condo 5. And this guy is amazing with the private detective eye, but that looked pretty obvious to me. That landing with the stairs, that's what it is. The same carpeting, wall color, and with a little broken glass. As a matter of fact, I took the liberty of overlapping the photos to make it a simpler visual. Also note how you can see, albeit a little blurry, what looks like could be Raquel's bead business items down below. The next two photos are on the actual mezzanine level of Condo 5, again moving just a few feet away from the previous photo. Here we still have the same carpeting and wall color. This photo, yet again, doesn't depict any damage. All I see are some cluttered papers around a desk. <laughs> Most likely that's what it looks like all the time, because of messy people living rent-free in somebody else's house. Freaking penthouse. I actually was... Uh, uh, I knew that Johnny Depp lived in this place in 2014. I lived in LA in 2014, and a friend of mine, we went downtown, she, she's a stylist, so we went downtown to buy some uh, fabric, and we stood around a cafe in that area, just in front of this building, and I, I thought this building looked beautiful, beautiful art, de uh, art deco. I actually made some pictures I have somewhere of the windows of this building, been always a big Johnny Depp fan, so I hoped that maybe he would show up. And in 2014, she told me that, you know, a real estate agent that she knew told her that uh, Johnny had purchased, not not for long, those, those houses. So uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool that probably maybe they just moved in or who knows. I did manage to find an older video from just before Johnny purchased and updated Condo 5. I took a still shot and took it upon myself to create an illustrated interpretation of the photos being taken and their locations, starting here, then here, and finally here. So now we are down to one last photo that we need to find out where it was or at the very least was not taken. This one. I know what you might be thinking. How are we going to figure this out with so little information available? There's no carpet, no wall color, and both Condo 3 and 5 have wood flooring. In both the original and new declaration, spilled wine was only mentioned by Amber and Raquel to be in the hall and Condo 3. So yes, at first glance, you would just assume this was one of the results of those descriptions, but... Actually, I want to watch the... Um, I think the body cam of the two cops that deposed it's available, so we're gonna go through that as well. I'll go ahead and tell you, the more I dove into this, the more my eyes were open to other possibilities, and I hope yours are too. So let's do this. Let's start with what stands out that we can compare. This rug looks like a good place to start. White and blue pattern, simple enough. There are a number of rugs on the first floor of Condo 3. We'll see if any match. Nope, 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 and nope. Okay, there you have it, debunked. This was clearly not taken in Condo 3. Okay, I'm just kidding. I can do better. What about the wood floors? Let's compare those to Condo 3. They're not really the same texture, if you ask me. The floors in this property damage photo are pretty smooth with a glossy finish contrasting heavily up next to the deep textures and almost matte finish of Condo 3's flooring. Still need more? All right, let's go all out. You might want to get out your notepads and pencils because Actually, the reflection of the window, the light, it might change the color on the floor, but uh, it, the color of the, of the floor on, on, the, on, the, on the other condo seemed a little darker. It's about to be a rapid fire round of information. As you can plainly see, there's a wine bottle. Not smashed or broken, by the way. You know, I hate that we can't really read the label, but come on, that shouldn't stop us from figuring it out. 
This is a red wine, white label, and Google is a thing, so several hundred image searches later, switch the photo upside down, zoom in, and boom. I'll take Chateau. a few seconds while I'm speaking to fade the clear label in and out over the blurry one so you can... Chateau Montreux. What is that? Chateau Saint-Estif? Where is that from? 1990. Jesus Christ, 1990. Oh man, this bottle of wine, probably it's uh, at least, this bottle of wine, it's at least a couple of hundred euro if you buy it directly. Uh, usually, you know, like wine w which is already this old, um, like 30 years old or 25 years old, probably it's from a good year, you know, and uh, th th usually they go in price quite a lot. It could be also a $500 bottle, eh? it depends. I don't know this wine specifically, this brand. Have time to visualize it. Hope this helps. I know I'm going to butcher this name, but here goes nothing. This is a Chateau Montrose Saint Estef, most likely from the mid-1990s, as these wines were known to hit their peak around the 20-year mark. Also, the label became colorized in 2000 and changed the insignia altogether in 2005. This is a Bordeaux wine, which for the purposes of this investigation means the standard bottle diameter of a Bordeaux wine is less than 3 inches, 2 and 7 eighths to be exact. However, if this is supposed to be the bottle used in Condo 3, it was stated by Amber and Raquel to have been a magnum sized bottle, making it a um, Wow, those people, they treat themselves uh, with really good wine. A whopping 4 inches in diameter. Why does that matter? I'm glad you asked. Laws of perspective allow us to take this perfect cylinder and move it to a more centered position without skewing it too much as long as we keep it on the same horizontal plane. I'll bring it as close to centered as possible in this photo, meaning to the point directly beneath the camera being used and where the wood planks create a right angle. This allows us to determine how wide the planks are compared to the bottle. As you can see, each wood plank is roughly one and a half bottles wide with a four inch bottle that makes them six inch wide planks. If you watched my two-part video, you know I recreate. Man, this guy is just unbelievable. Feels like I'm watching a trailer, like I'm folding. That's so satisfying. Created an accurate representation of the condo floor plans. Part of that recreation involved finding official verified documentation of the plan. Sadly, I was only able to find one condo with clear plans, but that was enough for me. That's because it comes with a handy measurement guide. As you can see, this is an official documentation of the floor plan of Condo 3. This measurement guide shows us one foot with an offset piece showing us an additional four foot increment, and then finally adding the remaining five feet showing a 10 foot increment in total. But my main focus is on this four foot increment. If we line this up next to the window, it shows us each window is four feet wide or 48 inches, and these windows wrap all the way around the building. So let's go back to Condo 3. Let's get rid of the rugs and decor so we can see the floor. We'll add some lines for measuring and mark the wood floors for better visibility. Finally, we'll bump these over because they're a bit offset. And there you go. Let's count together, shall we? One, two, three, four, five, six. So these 48 inch windows can fit six of the wood planks from Condo 3. That makes them eight inch wide planks. And yes, these floors cover the entire downstairs area of Condo 3. Now let's go check out Condo 5. I wasn't able to move the chair, sorry, but here we go. Line straight down for measure, floor lines, follow laws of continuity and perspective, and there you go. Count along. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That makes these planks 6 inches wide completely confirming this to be a picture of Condo 5's floor, not Condo 3. Wow, another setup basically. They just, you know, like afterwards, they thought, okay, let's make some uh, movie magic. Let's create some damage to make pictures to alleged disaster that never took place or abuse that never took place. Wow. So there you have it. Even with the additional photos in Amber's recent filing, there is still not one single photo submitted showing any damage to Condo 3 where Johnny allegedly, and I quote, both Amber and Raquel smashed everything he could. So where are the photos depicting it? I guess I rest my case for now. Wow.
I mean, again, another clear example of when you use logic, thank you so much to Incredibly Average to really presenting those things to us, which are out there. But, you know, like a lot of times people, they're too quick to watch. You see a picture of a broken bottle on the floor or some wine spilled on the wall and you buy into the narrative because that's how our brain works. You know, like somebody uh, seems to give a very convincing, uh, you know, like a, a telling of retelling of an event, of an abuse or whatever, and then presenting some pictures in the right moment, our brain, our brains make the connection very quickly because we want to make sense of things. But then if you take a moment and you just look and magnify things a little bit better and you start to realize, wait a second, you know, maybe those things could have been taken any other moment to just break a picture's frame of, of their friends. You know, it's something that you can do whatever. And another time with this video, we have proof that allegation which they are so overblown, so incredibly theatrical, in fact, they manifest in little to none evidence. Absolutely. And another video that remind us that how unfair the UK trial was, that all of this was already available in 2019, three years ago. And here we are fighting the same battle. And uh, I, I really hope that some of these things at least uh, got to the jury, you know, like maybe the jury made some some research. I don't know if they were allowed before the, 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 the trial started, but maybe some people, you know, managed to get their hands on something because it makes a huge difference, really. Guys, go subscribe to Incredibly Average. Subscribe to my channel. We're going to cover the whole trial to the end of the 27th of May. And the finger crossed, always spread love. Ciao.